Now, we're moving on to our final main stage session. And it's about things you didn't know Axonify could do. So to introduce this, I'm going to bring in Andrew Jackson, VP of Customer Experience. Paul Turner of Lowe's. This is where my British accent might go wrong. So Erin Frank of Deutsch Family Wine and Spirits. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and finally, Eileen Lowe of DFI Retail. Please give them a big welcome. So we're gonna um, have a, a lengthy conversation today. And what you're gonna hear today are a bunch of things that either you maybe didn't know Exonify could do, or maybe you were using certain parts of the platform like rewards or programs, but they're gonna talk to you about ways that they're using it. Some of you in here are soon to be customers. Some of you have been using it for days, weeks, months, years. So hopefully you're gonna hear something that uh, you haven't seen or heard before. So my first question as we ease into this, look at you three, looking delightful. Um, what I'm gonna ask you to do, I know you all have brand recognition for your companies, but could you please tell us what your company does? Erin. Okay. Hi everybody, I'm Erin Frank and I'm from Deutsch Family Wine and Spirits. We are a uh, producer and importer of wine and spirits. And what we do is we take those products and then we sell them to distributors who then take them and sell them to accounts, which are restaurants, retail stores, things like that. They call them on and off premise. Excellent, thank you. Paul. Hi, I'm Paul Turner. I'm a manager of HR systems at Lowe's and most of you probably are familiar, but Lowe's is one of the largest home improvement retailers in the country. Uh, we have around 300,000 associates and transact around $18 million a week in customer uh, transactions. And we've been a user of Exonify for about four years now. So excited to be here and discuss some of how we're using the platform. Hi, Lynn. DFI Retail is a pan-Asian retailer in um, Asia. We have more than 10,000 stores comprising of supermarkets, hypermarkets, health and beauty stores, which are equivalent to your drug stores here, convenience, as well as home furnishing. And we are rep represented in 11 markets in Asia. I come from Malaysia. Um, we have more than 60,000 employees right now speaking seven different languages. Um, so let the, uh, we've, we've heard about your companies. Let's uh, set even more uh, ground uh, work here and tell us about your use of Exonify, how long you've been on Exonify, number of users and that type of thing that'll uh, set the stage for us. Aaron, I'm gonna go back to you. Okay, so uh, we've been with Exonify for over four years um, and we have um, a special group of users within our company. We're about 400 total. And within that, we have 150 to 200 field sales people. And our field sales people are the folks on the ground. Uh, they are the ones who are going to accounts. They're training the distributors. They are out every day working hard to sell our products. Uh, speaking of products, has anybody had Josh sellers before? Okay. <laughs> Has anybody had Yellowtail before? Redemption Whiskey or Greywell Gin? Those are just some of our brands. In case you were curious what brands that we have, those are some of them. So they are out selling those all the time. And we, uh, we've been working with them hard. They've been in the system for a while. So our, um, our participation is averaging around 95%. And we usually average between 15 and 16 times a month in frequency. Uh, one important thing, though, that I will mention with, our, with those numbers is we make sure to turn off Exonify on the weekends. Uh, it is a company policy to reserve the weekends for family. And it's kind of a cool thing that Deutsch does. They have a very strong feeling on work-life balance and family, and they make sure we turn off Exonify on the weekends and also for a few weeks at the end of the year so that everybody gets some time with their family. Yeah, that's great, thank you. Paul, next, uh, uh, let's talk about Lowe's. Yeah, so at Lowe's we have around 300,000 global associates that have been using Exonify in some form or fashion since we went live in June of 2020. Uh, the project began in 2019, but uh, we've been ramping it up ever since then. And so currently all of our store associates are using it as part of their onboarding. So they're in there very frequently. Participation rates hovering in the mid 80s with frequency around seven to eight times per month. Uh, our corporate audience was a more recent addition to actual formal training. We have a suite of self-directed self paths um, as well as a few specific parts of the organization like merchandising receive their onboarding. 
Uh, from a supply chain perspective, we're also beginning to ramp up and plan in 2024 to migrate their entire onboarding into Exonify as well, at which point pretty much the majority of the organization will interact with Exonify fairly frequently during their first couple of weeks on the job. Um, and we average, you know, from a course perspective, we take around a million training activities per month, and that was pre-Exonify. When we add in questions and topics, those numbers swell to the three million type number. So the volume is, is massive, and we do a lot with a small team, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. Eileen. And I think for DFI, because we are very diverse, um, there's lots and lots and different culture and um, four different key retail brands. When we launched, um, we went really direct into looking at just um, sending out all the compliance module right now. Um, up to now, we have 45,000 active users. Mainly, we are very content-driven doing the mandatory causes on the compliance modules and also store operational uh, processes and procedures because there's lots and it's a continuous transformation that's happening across organizations and we push that out very frequently. And finally, for the health and beauty segment, there's loads of product knowledge that we put in discovery. So we use a lot of discovery to put all the product knowledge in there where our team members can easily access in the moment when they need the, the information. Wonderful, thank you. So three very different uh, sizes of companies, three different uh, uses of the platform, um, but all, all very interesting in, in how we're gonna get into this next part about how you're using it and how other people might not be using it. So Aaron, you've got a particularly small team uh, compared to the other two, which is completely fine. You've already given us a tidbit that you turn it off on weekends, which I think is, is interesting. Um, what can you come out of the gates with as far as uh, the usage of the Exonify platform that these people might not know about? Yeah, so uh, who here has like a lot of content in their system? Like so much, you almost wonder, do they people ever get to a topic anymore? There's just so much in there. <laughs> okay, so that was one of the things we were running into. We had a lot of content and we're like, is everybody even getting to all the questions just because there's so much there? The other thing is we've had the system for multiple years. And so we were looking at some users who have taken everything, but we also had users who hadn't taken everything, like new hires versus people who'd been there for five or six years. So all of these things came into play and looking at them, I was sitting there thinking, okay, well, how can we make this content a little bit fresher, making sure everybody's getting these important topics and also getting them when they need them because we do different uh, pushes. So like in the holidays, you'll see a lot more commercials around Josh because there's a big Josh push around the holidays. Uh, when you get to the new year, we are pushing like champagne and things with bubbles for the new year. So how can I prep everybody for this information? And what we figured out is that if we can calendarize our content and kind of schedule when we push certain content to people and move it up and down in the priorities that you can set, it gives them the information they need a lot more directly. They are prepared. They have the things they need when they're out in the field. It's fresh in their minds. And at the same time, it feels new. It's like they have, haven't seen a topic in a little while. And so when they see it come back up, they're like, oh, okay, that's right. I don't remember those questions. Uh, for example, business math. That is a tricky one. Everybody hates me for that topic. Uh, but it's a very important one because how else can you talk to an account about profit and margin? You gotta know that business map. So that is one of the bigger things that we've been doing. Um, should I get a little more into how we do it or we'll, we'll keep going for a Go little Go for bit? it, you're on a roll, let's keep going. <laughs> okay, okay. So I was trying to think of how to catalog all of this information. Um, I went to just a simple Excel file just because it's easily consumable and everybody can see it and reference it. I took a inventory of all the topics that we had. I put all the topics in the rows of the Excel sheet and then across the columns, I put the months of the year. And then I simply would write in, you know, looking at the priorities of the company when we would be having key information that they would need. Uh, are we selling more? Are we talking to our distributors to train them more at this time of the year. And I would mark on the calendar, that little calendar, if a topic should be shown at all, 
if it should be high priority, medium priority, and low priority. And I went from getting multiple emails, uh, I'd say multiple emails a month from my older users who are like, I've seen these questions a million times. They, they stopped emailing, emailing me. And everything was a lot fresher and we were seeing a little bit of an increase in knowledge and then seeing that being applied out in the field. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much for sharing yeah. that. Paul, I feel like you could probably speak for a couple hours on these <laughs> things, but uh, why, why don't you start us out of the gate with one thing? And I know content was also uh, important to, to the folks at Lowe's. Yeah, absolutely. As, as Aaron said, you know, the content volume just kind of continues to increase. And so something that's very important to us is managing that volume, managing that scope creep that occurs as different parts of the business are always saying that something new and exciting is now the new important thing that must be delivered to associates across the organization or perhaps in a targeted fashion. And part of my team's responsibility is to do governance to say, OK, you've been you know, you've deployed content for X period of time, and there's some things out there that may, maybe need to be removed before we can deploy that new content. So we've built some internal controls around content expiry, which is a feature Exonify is actually adding, which will make our lives easier. But one of the things that we do is actually make sure that the content, that when it goes live, it only sits for a maximum of one year or even six months before it comes up for a content lifecycle review. So part of my team's uh, responsibility is to basically look at those dates on the calendar and meet with different parts of the business to let them know what content exists in the system because as turnover happens, people may not remember uh, or may not even be aware of what they're responsible for. So some of you with large organizations may have had that challenge where you'll send an email to someone and say, hey, there's a decision that needs to be made and the person's response is, I didn't know I was responsible for this. And so one of the things that we've been able to do is basically manage all of that external and Exonify has been a great partner in you know, enhancing the system to allow that to be more natively baked in with things like expiration and additional uh, metadata fields on the content. Because to Andrew's point, it, the content really is what drives the entire experience and it needs to be engaging. It needs to be something that the associates feel value from. And so we take a lot of pride and responsibility in that. And for a lot of you, especially if you have multiple learning systems, one of those challenges can be what belongs in Exonify and what belongs in your traditional LMS. And so from a Lowe's perspective, we've often treated our traditional LMS, which success factors or Workday as our kind of HR platform, as our uh, you know, compliance and legal and safety platform, where all of that training resides there. And then Exonify was more your product knowledge role specific training, perhaps you want to expand into a new role or learn about what it takes to get promoted. So we would put some of that content there. Um, but one of the ways that we're using Exonify in a way that may be unique and what, what we're moving toward is actually to do more of that safety and compliance. And a big piece of that is powered equipment certification, where if any of you that are out there have associates that operate forklifts and reach trucks and things of that nature, you know how complex that that training can be from both a delivery standpoint from a maintenance standpoint, from a reporting standpoint, because you have external government uh, agencies that want to know about how that training is conducted. You have to be able to demonstrate, at times, significant audit trails of how that training has been conducted and how that person is, is certified to operate. And so one of the things that we've been migrating toward here is using a combination of certification topics and behavior forms to streamline the entire experience. Because in a lot of traditional systems, an associate has to sit in the training room and take a knowledge test. Then they have to go find a trainer. They have to print out a giant checklist. They walk with that trainer to the device to, in question. They sit inside of it. They go through that giant checklist. They, some of these things are legitimately 90 checkboxes long, right? And so they'll spend you know, 45 minutes to an hour doing their operational training. Then that checklist gets signed. And then they have to go find the person who that operator reports to in the store. But oh, guess what? They're not on shift today. They're, on, they're not scheduled for another couple of days. So that piece of paper has to go sit on a desk somewhere. And that manager has to be aware that that piece of paper is there. They have to find that piece of paper. They have to walk to another terminal. And they have to you know, mark that person complete and validate that that training took place. And so as you can imagine, at a, a company as large as Lowe's, those things are big points where that process breaks down. And we end up with associates who believe they're certified and pass their knowledge test, but maybe there's a six week delay between that occurring and them actually being licensed inside of our systems. And so what we've really been looking for is a way to streamline that process and take away those handoffs 
because that, op that observer, that trainer, may not be the manager and often is not the manager. And so Exonify gives us the flexibility to tell the system that this person is a leader zone user. Maybe they're not even a people leader, but we don't have to deal with the complex security that other enterprise platforms might require in order to give someone that access. So what we've been doing is working towards a single path for each piece of equipment and assigning that out, allowing the associate to take that test. They still have to deal with the paperwork part. That's a, Lowe's wishes we could get rid of that, but that's, that's a, for another day. But what we've enabled, what Exonify is going to enable us to do is take that handoff out of the equation because the observer can take a Zebra device that we have in all of our stores, and when they walk back to the forklift with the associate, as they're observing them complete the steps necessary, we've just put four or five checklist steps on that behavior form that they can sign off on the Zebra by accessing our Lowe's U app that we uh, term Exonify as in, inside Lowe's. And so there's no handoff, there's not a second piece. Everything occurs in real time during that place inside the system. And Exonify has been working a lot with us on the concept of the retraining, because as a lot of you may know, or may not know, depending on your exposure to this stuff, the forklift training is good for two years, and if you never make a mistake and you operate in a perfect environment safely, the systems are usually pretty good at saying, hey, you're due again two years from the last time you took the training. That's the happy path and the thing that doesn't take a lot of effort from a central admin team. Where we run into challenges with a lot of these platforms is sometimes someone can make a mistake. It can be a simple mistake. They could drive into some racking. They could back up incorrectly in the parking lot. Any of these numerous factors that could cause them to need to be retrained off cycle. And a lot of systems struggle with that concept. So we have to build an intuitive way for when a manager identifies an associate as needing that retraining, even though it might not be due for 18 more months, they've gotta be able in the moment to decertify that associate and have that system reassign that training. And so you know, I, I'll give a lot of credit to Exonify as they've been partnering with us for the last year to build out a method within Exonify to allow the manager to make that decision. So we can't centrally push that training. So once they've made that assignment, they can actually go back into Exonify and in a couple of clicks decide, hey, this person's license is revoked and that information can cascade out to our reports and Exonify immediately reserves that training. And if you do that same, I, I said that pretty simply, if you try to do something like that in Workday, you can be looking at several screens to, to just navigate to the starting point and then several more to complete that transaction inside the system. And whenever we add complexity to our stores like that, it just doesn't get done sometimes. They have so many other requirements, so many other areas of responsibility that anything that you know, requires these extra steps or slows them down just increases the likelihood that the process isn't completed. And with something like this, the risk of that is actually quite great. A lot of the work that my team engages with is you know, relatively simple. We often joke if people are very you know, upset about something, hey, we're not in a hospital or on a battlefield. You know, calm down, it's okay, no one's life is in the balance. But this is the exception to that. If a, if a retail associate is going to get injured on the job or severely injured and unfortunately even killed on the job, powered equipment is one of the most likely ways that that happens. And that's the type of thing that keeps us awake at night. So knowing that these things are that important and that life and limb is truly on the line, we take it very seriously. And it has a lot of different layers of complexity that have to be solved for in order to make the system intuitive. And so far in the 12 plus years that I've been at Lowe's, we've not had a solution that we could really stand up in front of our executives or our regional vice presidents and say, this is an intuitive powered equipment solution. And I'm confident that the way that we're moving forward with the solutions in Exonify is gonna give us that for pretty much the very first time because both the associate and manager experience is reduced from several system hops and multiple clicks down to something that's intuitive and we've been live with Exonify long enough that many of these associates are already familiar with the platform. So it's not taking something brand new or building a custom experience that they're unfamiliar with. It's using the same layouts and same UI. And so we're very excited about the, the coming months as we continue to build this out to make forklift certification something that people don't you know, stress as much over when they're trying to be the certification trainer at their location, as well as give our safety teams the detailed reporting metrics that they need to know who's certified and when, and be able to pull that at the summary level across the entire organization, as well as down to the individual level at any store, and do that from any location on any day of the week. 
So it's an immense challenge, and you know, I definitely want to give credit to Exonify for helping us brainstorm and think through their platform and influence them, and you know, maybe have a few you know pretty intense conversations about what's important to us and when we need it by. So I, I give them a lot of uh, kudos for that, and and this forklift certification is definitely something you may not think of, especially with a platform like Exonify being the type of place that you could house something that fits into that safety and compliance bucket, but Lowe's is making that progression. And I think you should look into it as well, if it fits for your organization. Wow. <laughs> I think Wu is right. Um, I think I'm supposed to say something clever to sum that up, but, but here's what I know. It sounds like we're saving lives over there. So that's Yeah, yeah, that's it, it, cool. it really does. It's like I said, it's the only thing that about my job that really, when things have gone wrong, it keeps you up and you wanna make sure that you're delivering something that people feel good about and feel safe using and understand easily. And that's not always simple at a, at a company this large and complex. Yeah, well said, Paul. So um, we're gonna turn to Aileen. So Aileen has uh, traveled 20 hours on a plane to get here. She's doing fantastic. And we're gonna, yeah. A little longer than my flight. Yeah, longer. so we're, we're gonna turn it over to her to hear about uh, how you're using the platform. Right. Um, well, I, I just picked up two tips, content expiry and how we can calendarize the, the whole milestone of how and when we push out which content. Okay, I'll take note of that. <laughs> Thank you for that. So in DFI, we are now going into the post-COVID um, and we are starting to see lots and lots of customers, more and more customers walking into the stores. And we are, getting, we are starting also to get a lot more tourists. So we are thinking to ourselves, hey, it's time for us to revamp our, or, or at least to enhance and refresh our customer service standards. So it is a huge program. We call it the WOW customer service program, which we have just launched May this year. And it is an intensive six month program, which have three different compartments, components to it. So the first one, we all know that 10% kind of formal learning of we have four um, virtual training sessions, which we also uh, schedule that into the event in Exonify. And then we have one in person, face to face. We schedule that as well in Exonify. And we have six e-learnings module. So that is uh, paced across the six months. And we, of course, prescribe that to all our team members, whether you are part-timer or you're a contract team members. So thanks to Exonify, we have this reporting system and analytics to help us keep track of who is there, who has not done what, how else can we support them to complete that wild well service journey. So that's the 10%, the compo first component. For second component, how sure or how confident are we that everything that they have learned in that 10% are being translated into their day-to-day -day with their interaction and engagement with their customers? So in the past, before we have Exonify, everything is done like a checklist. You have paper, you tick off the box, okay, you, you greet, you smile, you have eye contact, you do your upselling, your cross-selling, and then what the stores had to do was to scan it and email it back to us. So that's very archaic. So thank God we have Exonify and we tried out the behavior evaluation function. I'm not sure how many of you have experienced that. So we use that one and we can digitalize um, the, the process. So it's not only for us at the back end as admin to do all the tracking to simplify our admin work, but our um, customers, which are the managers who need to do that, ob that observations, find it a lot way more simpler because they can just walk the store with their phone, just get into the behavior function and then do that observation and mark it off on their phone. Yeah, so that's component uh, second one. So the last one, then what's next, right? All is done. So how do we sustain that momentum? Because service is continuous. Your customers don't just stop coming to you after the six months program. So how do we sustain that? So that's where we run the search for our WOW service champion competition. 
And the idea we have behind this is to for for the team members to kind of record their wow service moments, um, short bite size. You know now all these young generations in the store they love TikTok and they are good at it, so they enjoy doing that. But then the bigger question for us is how do we send all of that wonderful, amazing videos out to everyone so that people can vote for their most favorite wow service moments. Aha, we have Exonify. <laughs> and we use Discover, so we upload all the videos into Discover. And if you would have already noticed, um, you can just go in, look through all the videos, and all you need to do is to hit the like button and that can be um, tracked in the analytics, uh, the report function in, in Exonify. And from there, we'll be able to determine who, which video has the most like. So yeah, that's a lifesaver for us. Yes, so um, we, the program is still running, so we are coming to the end and um, this video uh, voting will kick in in December. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. You want more? <laughs> I really didn't need to be here today. So, so uh, I do want more. So when we had a, uh, the three or the four of us had a conversation leading up to this, one thing that you said um, to, to me was Exonify is a company project, not an HR project. Can you explain what we mean by that or how that comes into play? Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. Um, we launched Exonify back in 2020, June, that was in the middle of the pandemic, right? Under full lockdown, everything is, rem is done remotely, virtually. And I'm not too sure if this is a common problem here in this part of the world, but where I come from, each time when we want to push down certain initiatives, people will just push away and there's a lot of resistance because they always feel what's in it for me. Is this another HR project? Don't I have enough already on my plate? So this time we did it very differently, of course, with the help of Libby, Sudan and Kevin. They've been wonderful to help us really land this um, in a big successful way, um, despite the lockdown. We engaged our stakeholders right from the beginning. So this is the, something that we learned back in 2020, especially people from operations. They are the end users, so they need to know what's in it for me. Why are we shifting into a totally different ways of learning? And from where I come from, we never have a mobile learning platform. So we are switching the entire ways of doing things and consuming um, learning and, and acquiring knowledge. So, so the, the message here really is when people people will only be totally on board and they know that this is not another company project or a HR project, this is for us. It's to help us right now where we cannot see or cannot go to a classroom in-person training. Now we have this. This is where we can continue to reskill and upskill and grow our knowledge in, at the touch of our fingertip. Yeah. Fantastic. So. I know we've talked a lot, uh, and you heard this morning, talked a lot about new things that are coming to Exonify. I am always a fan of some of the things that have been around for a while, things like rewards and the games and whatnot. Um, can you, uh, the three of you, talk about how you're using some of those things? Aaron, I know um, you don't play a lot of games, I think, at your place, but you do do rewards outside of the platform, et cetera. Can you touch on those things? Yeah, so um, we don't have a whole lot of engagement just yet with the games. Some people play them, some people don't. Our teams, our field sales team is usually very busy out in the field, so they'll go in and they'll take their quiz questions, but they don't always uh, do the games. However, I did hear really, I was in a session this week and um, the presenter was talking about how you can rotate games uh, and do some different competitions with a game, encourage people to use their points and bet, kind of bet on each other who's gonna beat the other. And I think those will go over really good with my team. And I'm hoping to implement some of those actually when we go back. 
Yeah, that, that's great. I know, I know at Exonify, sometimes around things like the Masters Golf Tournament, we've turned off all games except for golf. Um, and then we've had like a month-long competition on that. Um, so those are some other thoughts. Paul. Um, yeah, it's similar. So you'll probably notice when people first join the platform, they'll often play the games a lot. And then that participation and that frequency of the gameplay will decline. But we have a solid 30 to 40% of our user population that fairly consistently plays them. And we do cycle the games in and out. We rarely have more than four active at a time. So every quarter, the team kind of, we just get together and use a random number generator to take two away and add two. But a couple like bubble shooter, we cannot remove, or I will immediately get an email uh, wondering where it went. And it's, it's great to see the stores engage with it that way. And they'll do similar things. You know, we, we do it seasonally. We put football in when football season starts and golf when golf season starts and try to keep it relevant that way. And the, the individual locations and our contact centers will just kind of independently create little homebrew competitions that they'll use to within the games to you know aim for the high scores and things like that. And from a rewards perspective, we also have a, a third party recognition platform. So another quarterly feature that we do is we take all the Exonify points that you earn from answering your questions, and we actually just export those points to this other platform and convert that into a reward system. So associates can both recognize each other through this platform just for a job well done or for any number of reasons, job anniversaries, birthdays, things of that nature. And it's just another way that we can you know, give the points value and give that meaning by saying, hey, if you consistently answer your questions and you're in this platform more and you're in the top third or top half, of participants in a given quarter, you're gonna get a little extra reward at the end. And you can, you know, if you're with the company long enough, you can save a lot of these points and it goes into a larger bucket. So for our national sales meeting as a company, some of the top sales uh, store managers in the company are actually awarded, you know, 10,000 points uh, as, as part of that. So it all ties together into that recognition system and uh, Exonify is just another uh, great component of that. Excellent. Eileen, I know you mentioned your group is very competitive. How does that play out? Yeah, um, we don't do as much. No, we don't. We tried with the game, but it didn't really work out as well. Maybe we need a little bit more Asian kind of games. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> some Noted. some some yeah. K-pop or BDS related yeah. kind of games. <laughs> So we don't do that, but we leverage a lot more on the rewards. Um, yes, they are competitive. They, they go in um, diligently every day to earn their points, to answer their questions and tell a friend. Uh, we, we do that as well. Um, so how we, we have kind of refreshed the approach that we use in rewards. Just this year, we started to introduce the quarterly ruffles tickets functions mm -hmm. to our reward system. So in um, each quarter, we will have a whole lot of all these different prizes that they can redeem. This is just to also encourage the team members to use their points. So we have the four quarters and twice a year, we do something different where it will be like a big ruffles in June and one more coming up in December. Then the questions that we start to get from our customers is some of them, they, um, all the super learners, they are super, super diligent to go in and do their learnings, collect points. However, not everybody is lucky, right? So I can buy like a thousand tickets with all the points I earn. Yeah, my heart, my sweat and blood and everything. I even stay away at night just to do the learning and earn their points but I still don't get drawn. How? So what do we do? So separately, out of the reward mechanism or functionality in Exonify, um, there are reports that you can customize, filter, and draw from the report function to identify your super learner. So what we did, uh, we look at the top scorers, the points, and uh, highest users with the most number of graduated topics. Um, there, we identify our top 10 super learners and we recognize and reward them separately. So they, we will invite them up to our head office where the CEOs and the head of functions, their immediate managers will um, present the prize and then we will do a video and photo and we will put all of that into Exonify broadcast message. 
Perfect. Um, two quick things about points. So I've been at Exonify for seven years, and I think our customer care team consistently tells me that the, the question they get the most is what happened to my points because of the, yeah, I can see a lot of heads nodding, the 30-day rolling versus the <laughs> lifetime points. Um, there's, a, there's an article on that if you're still confused. Um, the last question, and I didn't quite prep you for this, is have you heard anything in the last couple days or in the uh, product talk this morning that you are super excited about? Okay, I'll go first. Um, I would say I'm excited about the AI conversation um, and seeing how that's evolving. Um, I'll be the first to admit I was a little bit of, um, I was a little against the AI because I'm like, oh, it's not really AI. It's like, that's not a robot. That's not like, you know, something coming alive and walking around. But I am seeing already so many applications to how this can be used. Uh, and for myself personally, I'm going to be using it to help generate more questions to keep that information fresh so people aren't seeing the same questions over and over again. Um, I'm really excited to play with it and see where it goes from here. Awesome. Yeah. And I'll piggyback off of that concept because for us, it's back to the content, getting that relevant content at the scale that we need. Having something like an AI tool that can help us at least get the outline uh, is super useful and interesting. And then even what was demonstrated earlier today where taking away the need to click through a system and simply ask something to happen. So you just heard me talk at length about powered equipment and assigning it and the difficulties there. If I could press a button on my mobile device and ask Exonify to assign training or check the certification status of an associate and really get those kind of rich results driven entirely by voice interaction. That's super exciting for us because it goes back to that idea of streamlining things. And instead of just reducing the number of clicks, you're outright eliminating the clicks from the system. And, and so the, the progress being made there is, is something that's really thrilling to us. Super. I think for us, it will definitely be max. <laughs> yes. With seven languages, we always struggle with the turnaround time that we need to do all the translations. So I'm super excited and looking forward to Welcome Max. Okay, well, um, here, here's the thing. We at Exonify as employees can talk about the platform until we're blue in the face. And uh, at some point in time, you need to hear it from the people who are using the platform and using it in ways that maybe we didn't even think of or consider. Um, I want to thank the three of you. This has been fantastic to hear what you have to say. It's a lot of uh, work to um, come to a conference and then have the added ability or the added responsibility of doing uh, an onstage session at the end. Thank you so much to the three of you. This has just been absolutely fantastic. So thank you. Thank you.